when we look at the images on manufacturers' websites for Teardrop and Square Drop campers, a lot of the time they'll be set up exceptionally well by a stylist or someone who thinks they're a stylist. And it'll just be basically the camper, the awning will be out, there'll be a couple of chairs there, there could be people standing there looking into the distance. The venue could be on top of a rocky mountain, in the snow, on a grassy knoll next to a river. They're all images that portray that this is where we want to be using that product. What these images don't show us though are the things that we actually need to camp with. And today we're going to take away one of those and we're going to add something that I think is far, far better than a major manufacturer uses that is just an off-the-shelf item. So stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Daryl, welcome to the channel. Firstly, I want to apologize for my content being a little bit sporadic lately. Uh, I work for a family, we've got a family printing business or we had a family printing business, I'm third generation. And because people don't get print much nowadays, my dad's to 85, so he's looking to retire and about time. And we've had to go through the process of closing down what a business that's been there for nearly a hundred years uh, and it's been there's been a lot going on <laughs> and the other story is I've also applied for some new roles and um, I'm in training at the moment for one of them and it is absolutely horrendous so I don't know where that's going to go I don't know if I'm going to continue to pursue that or not but um, we live in interesting times at the moment but I may talk about that at a later date it's all a little bit too raw at the moment Today though, on our camper, because the camper is set up quite high, we need a step to get into it. Um, and you'll see this a lot with teardrops and square drop campers. You probably don't need one if you've got a road going teardrop that's low. Um, but if you look at a lot of images of people actually camped in these things, you'll find a lot of the times at the bottom of the door, you'll see a little plastic step that they just carry around with them and it just makes life so much easier. For us, because this is higher, I've cut down a little step ladder. It gives us two steps, but you know what my thoughts are on this type of thing. It's carrying around something else. Where do we carry it? A lot of the time this just gets chucked down on the bedding, which I don't like at all. Um, but it works okay with just the 270 degree awning out. It doesn't work that well if we have the room out. When we went away recently for a week and we had the room out all week, it was just a bit of a pain because the room doesn't end right up to the camper. This has to be sort of over that and it's just very, very awkward. So I've had a replacement for that in my mind for quite a while and I've looked at purchasing it every now and then. It's like, oh, I'll just leave it for a bit. And after the week away, I just decided, yes, we're just, I'm just going to go and order one. The background to this though is this isn't my original idea. Uh, someone's already used it and I'm getting inspiration off them. If you have a look at Bruder's EXP4, they have a fold up step that attaches underneath the camper and um, it's a really sweet little setup. But when they first released it, I was looking at taking this camper apart in my mind and I looked at this step and I thought I really like that and surely that's not what I think it is. But this step is the rear step of a Land Rover 110 Defender. If any Land Rover Defender type of product for the last 30 years has had one of these steps on the back of it. And I thought, I'm gonna go and order one. So it was, I think it was $170. It might've been 200 delivered. But this is what we've got. And you look at it from Bruder's point of view and it's like, well, why would you reinvent the wheel when I can just pick up something off the shelf? But basically all this is, is a spring-loaded step with two 10 mil mounting holes. Pretty simple. And because it's spring-loaded, it folds up, it doesn't take away a lot of clearance underneath the camper. And when I, when I saw it on this Bruder, it was like, oh, that is a really good idea. Clearly, so all we're going to do is we're going to drill two holes through the floor. I'm going to put a plate either side of it. It's fairly tight around that side. I have looked at get, getting a caravan step and cutting it down because they're really, really cheap, those things. 
and I thought if I can get one of those I can cut it down because you don't need them that wide you just need somewhere where you know halfway up between the ground and the camper that you can put a foot and and get in um, especially with the height of mine and this thing will work superb and it's fairly stout it looks quite good um, and thank you Bruder for doing that <laughs> It's not as if it's a bespoke thing, it's just something that they're buying, they're doing probably similar mods to me, They've, they probably have a welded bracket underneath, I don't know. There's a couple of little mods though that I need to do to this. Um, when I got it, I need both of these brackets to sit at the same plane, and one of the brackets sat down a little bit further than the other one. So I've just had to, to grind away a little bit from one side of it. There's also a couple of legs at the top. Um, obviously this fits on a chassis rail on the Land Rover and these uh, legs at the back here sit up against something or slot in, I'd say they slot into a cut in the chassis rail. You think I'd know because I did have a Land Rover 110 at one point with one of those steps on it. Um, so I'm just going to trim those off so they're level with the mounting holes. Um, drill two holes in the camper, we'll bolt it up and then we'll have a look at what the end result is and if it's good enough or we need to extend those plate sizes inside and, and on the bottom of the camper. So let's go and get into that. That's this step finished. You can see how it folds up against very neatly against the side of the camper. And to use it, we just push that down and it's ready for use. Very happy with that one. And I've had my partner come out and test it and she gives it the seal of approval. She said it's very good. Um, it hangs completely out of the body and basically it's well, open the door, put your foot on here and just get into the camper and out. It's, it's, um, it's much, much better than the stepladder than what we had. So that is a win. To affix it, I've bolted it through the, the channel that runs down the side. This channel here is bolted to the outside wall and the floor. And we've bolted through that with two, two 10 millimeter bolts. And inside the camper,
you can see I've got this angle here with the bolts through it. And what I thought was I'd bolt through the wall if there was any flex, but there doesn't appear to be any flex. I'll see how it goes, but I might put two bolts through the uh, outside channel just to, to stop any flex if there is any, but there is not. This is um, very, very solid. It's very good. Got to be happy with that. That's far, far better than that aluminium stepladder. And as I said, this is a rear step for a Land Rover Defender 110, whatever. They've been this, exactly the same for years. Um, and this is a brand new item. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed this little tweak. And we'll see you next time. Bye now.